Hi guys, thanks for stopping by to this video. Uh, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a pinking shears stroke zigzag stroke teeth effect in Adobe Fireworks CS5. Now as you can see from the screen here, um, I've got three examples of what this pinking shear stroke zigzag stroke teeth effect is. For, uh, for Just for consistency in this video, stop me on to it three times. I'm just going to call it a zigzag effect. I don't know the actual uh, real name of this effect, so let's just call it a zigzag, just for the uh, purpose of this video. But um, where the pinking shears comes from, it's actually it's a, an abstraction from the real world, from a pair of pinking shears, what these are called. It's, it's from the dressmaking world, or clothes making, however you want to call it. And these scissors basically cut cloth and they've got these indentations in the steel and it creates a, a sort of a zigzaggy effect in the patterns there. So what these effects on these three websites, I'm using an example, that's what it is. It's sort of an extra, as I said, it's an abstraction from the real world. See on the uh, forefather's site, yeah, there. And on this site here, Claire Nichols Design, quite a nice site. And she's gone for the sort of cloth abstract effects there with stitching and a nice texture on the uh, graphical element itself. So, as you can see, this effect's used to sort of divide up sections of a website, and it seems to be quite common at the moment, and it's quite a, it's quite a nice effect. So, I've decided I'm going to teach myself how to do it in Fireworks, and also I'm going to show you guys how to do it and how, how I came about to do the, uh, the said effects. Right, so without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, let's open up Adobe Fireworks. We want to create a new canvas. Let's call it 1024 by 600. There's our blank canvas. I chose 1024 because that's a bog standard fix with uh, website container. Right, let's get on with it. The first thing we need to do, we create, need to create sort of a tooth. Um, it will become apparent what I mean by that in a minute, but I'll, I'll show you now. So the first uh, thing we need to do is create a square, a small square. Let's create black just for purposes of this video. Okay, now if you see in the rectangle tool, the vector tool, it's drawing a, a rectangle. Now we don't want that, we want a perfect square. So just to constrain the dimensions of the uh, vector into a square, we just hold down the shift as I did then. And if you see there, the width and the height of all the four corners, so four corners, four sides is exactly the same. That's fantastic. So we need to create this about 25 by 25 if we can. It's not a problem if you don't hit that exactly. So Fireworks is versatile enough so we can just select the object and change its dimensions here in this properties section. So I'm just going to change that down to 25 by 25. There we go. Oops. Alright, cool. Now it doesn't look, look much like a tooth, does it? So what we need to do, we need to transform the shape, rotate it by 45 degrees. So to do that we go modify, transform, numeric transform, rotate, stick 45 in there, hit OK, and then we have the start of our tooth. Doesn't look like a tooth, but all shall become clear. Now we need to go and create another vector, sorry another rectangle, a rectangle this time. And um, we want it to match the actual width of from that corner to that corner, so let's just Bring that up there. Oops. It doesn't really matter getting it exact, so we're going to match the width of this shape. But All right, we've got our two objects. Now we want to create a triangle shape out of this square. So I'm just going to zoom in slightly, Let's see what's going on. We want to select the four corners. So to do that, we go sub selection tool, click the vector. And if you see here, we've got four points selected. Now we want to select one of these points and delete it. So to do that, you just click the click the point. It'll see it turn red. Click it again. Now you may get a a dialog prompt saying, "Are you sure you want to flatten this flatten this uh, shape and uh, something like that?" Anyway, but if it does appear, just hit OK. And there also is a uh, a tick box saying, "Don't show this again." So if you do do you want to tick that, hit yeah, do tick it. So it's quite annoying, that little uh, dialog box, so I've turned that off anyway, so you might not see it. Anyway, back to the back to the uh, tutorial. So we've got that little blue box there, that means it's selected, so we're going to hit delete. 
And now we have our triangle shape, which is cool. Uh, right, it's width is 35. So with this rectangle, let's see, it is 35. We just want to drop that on top. Um, if you can see these smart guys, those purple stroke pink dotted lines appearing, these are really good. I think it's a useful, a useful introduction in CS5 where I think they're called smart guides where it'll guide objects so they line up perfectly with each other. It's a really good really good addition to the uh, fireworks tool there, so don't need to do anything more of that. It's, uh, let's look at it in... Yeah, that's fine. That's great. So we've got our two shapes there, our two vectors. Now we need to join these together. So if you see, it's two separate shapes at the moment, so we want that to become one single vector. So to do that, we select both. Um, again, with the subselection tool, just draw a selection around it. There we go. And we want to combine, use the combined paths tool. There's several ways to do this. Um, we'll just use this, the, com the path, the path, uh, I don't know what these things call, palettes, whatever they're called. Um, if you haven't got that open, you can just go to window, I think it's in others, yeah, it's in others, and then path. You may not have that open, so you may need to do that. So once you have that open anyway, so, oops, we've lost our selections. You just need to hit this one there, which is union. Uh, click the button, and if you see, it's now one shape. Great, that's what, exactly what we need. Now we're going to duplicate this section, sorry, this vector, and to do that, you simply go Control C and then Control V. And if you look at the layers section, you'll see a new vector appear there. Um, with either of these, you can you need to move one across. So select one of the objects, hold down Shift and press the right arrow key and it'll nudge it across sort of in jump I think it's in increments of five if you don't hold shift it does it one at a time so holding down shift just makes it a bit quicker um, once you you almost got them lined up perfectly you might just want to go single cursor key presses just to do the fine tuning as I said earlier now that's I think they're side by side perfectly yes that's great um, now what we're going to do again we just want to repeat this process, but let's select both of them and make it a bit quicker. So with subselection tool, just draw a shape around it. Control C, Control V, hold down Shift, right arrow, and let's line that up so there's no white space. Great, that's yeah, that's fine. Repeat again. Control C, Control V, hold down Shift, right arrow. I think you get the idea now. Let's do it again. Obviously, this becomes quicker the more objects we have on the screen. Uh, that's got it. Yep. Let's select about this many now. Just to finish this off. Alright, there we go. Let's just get rid of these. We don't need these. They're superfluous. Damn you, vector. There you go. Alright, great. Now we have the bottom half of our shape that we're looking to create. Now if you see here, we do, we do have a lot of paths of all these individual shapes. So we want to do a union with these again, just to create one large vector. So again, subselection tool, just draw... Oh, need a bigger graphics tablet. Let's try again. There you go. Right, we're going to do the uh, union again. I'm just going to show you an alternative way to do this uh, by the menus. You can do these, perform these actions several ways. So we're going to go, right, where's this again? It's modify, combine paths, union. Boom. There we go. Right, it's looking, it's looking good. Right, now we need to take a copy of this shape to create the top bit. Let's actually just name these layers just to, so you can... An understanding of what goes where. So I'm just going to call this one bottom bit. There we go. And we're going to copy bottom bit. So select Control C, Control V, hold down Shift, up arrow this time. This is going to form the, the top bit of the shape. So yeah, that's nicely positioned. And we're going to flip this over horizontally. And oh no, we're not. <laughs> that didn't work. Sorry, it's flip vertical, that's it. So with that little tool there. My bad. Right, and this is the top bit, so let's call this top 
But you don't really need to do this section, I'm just doing it just to illustrate what goes where. Now we just need a big rectangle to complete the shape and join these two sections together. So I'm going to go there to... Oh. Sorry viewers, I'm on a titchy graphics tablet. Rubbish, need a big one. Alright, excellent. Um, I'm just going to show you a little tip actually in fireworks. You don't always, it doesn't matter if you don't draw the correct shape, as I said before, um, with this properties inspector tool, it's really good. I'm just going to show you, right, so we need this rectangle here to be the same width of the top bit and the bottom bit, so that's 910. So I'm going to click that, I'm going to make it width 910. Drag it across, drop it on there. And let's just bring it down. I'll show you another, another tip of fireworks. We can use a transform tool if we like. We can just go control T. See these handles appear and then just drag it down. Brilliant. Or oh, just go back. We can just see, hit the dimensions. So the properties panel there. We call it, I don't know, 350. I'll send it downwards. Yeah, brilliant. Right, there we go. So we've got our top bit there, our bottom bit, and our rectangle in the middle. Again, we just want one vector shape as it's three at the moment. So to do that, I'm going to show you another alternative way to select a flint. Simply control A. Select all. There we go. And we're going to do a union again. Which is from that little tool there. Fantastic. There we are. We're done. We are done. There's our shape that we can use on our website. Now, the important thing to note is, because we've got now just one vector shape, we can apply all sorts of effects to it, whereas we couldn't if it was in separate sections. So it's very important that stage we've just done. Just to illustrate this point, we can now add a gradient, linear, let's make it, let's make it blue, there we go, we can add, we can add all sorts of special effects to it, we can add a drop shadow, really cool, we can add textures, onyx, awesome. So there you have it folks, that's how to create a zigzag stroke, pink and shears, stroke tooth effect in Adobe Fireworks CS5. Um, please do visit my website, johnaspinall.co.uk. I'm going to be producing a lot more of these tu uh, Fireworks tutorial videos in the very near future. So if you, do, if you did like this video on YouTube, pre please do press like and um, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.